on last night and do these little thrift flips. I'm so tired. But here we are. I am much more perky in the morning. So if you are new here, my name is Bree. I'm the owner and artist of Upcycled by Bree, and I love to go thrifting and junking. I take my finds and I transform them into beautiful home decor. So today I am working on a couple of thrift flips. I'm going to pull up comments. If you are on, say hello and let me know where you're watching from. All of the uh, thrift flips I'm doing are already listed on my site. I showed them Saturday night, I think that was, yeah, on a haul, and I have them dropped in the comments. So if you're watching the replay, just click that live chat and you can see what we're talking about. Looks like Brendan is on. A good morning. So I want to start off with one of these sleighs. I had um, two of them listed. One of them has sold to be updated and then there's one available. So if you're interested, you can hop on over. They're $22.95. And I'm gonna use some JRV decoupage paper this morning. Let me know if you've ever tried the JRV decoupage paper. I have that available as well. And there's some fun um, Christmas designs. I'm thinking I'm gonna be using the Santa postcards, but maybe the new advent. Brendan's from California. Right on. I love Callie. Uh, Cindy's on. Good morning, Cindy. And Amy is here from Kentucky. All right, so I just grabbed a um, disinfecting wipe. I don't always use these. I try to, um, you know, use reusable rags, but this is convenient this morning. So I grabbed one. I'm just going to wipe this down, get rid of any of the sticker residue and all of the dust that's left on these. So thinking a little decoupage on this, um, I can show you guys then how to kind of blend your edges in with your decoupage paper, because I don't want to paint these. They're a really nice old dark wood. And the fun thing about them, hey, good morning, Robin and Gloria. Fun thing about them is like, this side looks like a shelf. So I'm gonna leave that side plain. You can use them for Christmas this way, and then you can use them as a shelf all year round. Hey, Brandy, good morning. I'm glad you're here. You always make a nice, fun, a lively, live chat. So I don't usually come on live Monday mornings on YouTube, um, but I felt bad for, for not painting with y'all on my thrift flips or my thrift haul this week. And speaking of thrift haul, this Sunday or Saturday or whatever day I end up doing it, I'm going to have some really, really good junk up. I teased it last night over on my uh, Instagram and Facebook stories. It was cold this morning. We woke up and it was 34 degrees out. So that was feeling more appropriate for these holiday flips. Uh, Robin was my first thumbs up. Thank you, Robin. Let's start that uh, that thumbs up trend if y'all wouldn't mind. It'll help me help me in the YouTube algorithms. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna cut off this old red string too, and I've got some better rope. Hey, Eva was able to catch me live this morning too. I've got 32 people on. Maybe Monday mornings are a good time for a live. <laughs> Okay, so I'm thinking I've got the Santa postcards, and this is from last year, so I've already used a little bit of this one with these gorgeous red and green, more traditional colors, right? Um, and then I have the new Advent paper as well. Thank you guys for the thumbs up. If y'all want to share this out, that would be great too. I think I put it in my uh, creative group already, but if you want to send it to a friend, that is always appreciated. So I'm thinking, though, I'm going to use Santa postcards because these are more horizontal. Um, and these little sleighs, or I guess they're not sleighs, they're sleds. My bad. Um, they hang vertically. Oh, Destiny and her 12-year-old son Gray is on. Good morning, Gray. How are you? Are you a crafter? So I'm either leaning towards this guy here or my sleepy Santa. Drop me a comment. This very pretty muted tone Santa with the tree or the sleepy snoozy Santa. <laughs> sleepy says Brandy. I thought so too. He fits pretty well on there. While you're commenting, I'm going to grab my liquid patina. Oh, 
course it's going to be stuck shut. We'll deal with that in a second. <laughs> okay, Sleepy Santa it is. Sleepy Santa says everybody, isn't this cute? Okay, and you guys, I don't want to be that person, but I only have one of these left on my site. I stocked them up last week and they're gone already. Um, I'm going to place an order this afternoon for more. I've got plenty of the advent calendars and I still have like six, I think, left of the Christmas stag. But there's only one Santa postcard, so if you want him, go grab it right now. Um, and then my decoupage paper ships for just $3.95. Hey Brie, Tiffany uh, watching from Minnesota. Hello, hello. Brandy says this reminds her of the night um, before Christmas. Yes, I know. We had a copy that looked a lot like that too. So that's great. And I'm going to show you guys how we're going to get this to look like I didn't just stick a piece of paper on the sled. Like it was meant to be there. Okay. This is my trick to get my patina open. Do this at your own risk. I just take my little Cricut tool here. If something's stuck shut and I run it under the rim. But be careful. Don't hurt yourselves. And then to keep it from doing this, if you put a little Vaseline around the, the rim of it before you put your lid on, it won't stick. Good morning, Shelly. Can you see my hat? Oh, you can't see it in this view. I have it stuck up on one of my Crocs right now. <laughs> I need to put it on. This piece of hair keeps <laughs> popping out today. I don't know what it's doing. So there we go. That loosened it up. But be careful if you do that. Okay, so I've got my sled all clean. There's a couple of dings and scratches on this. I'm going to um, work on top of this, and then I'll show you how... I'm gonna freshen up those things and scratches too. Sorry, I'm not super prepared. I was gonna go live later, but I figured I should just do it now. And I didn't pull everything out. Okay, so I got a sponge brush and I got my liquid patina. If you guys haven't used the DIY liquid patina before, it's a multi-use product. You can use it as a sealer as a decoupage medium. Um, you can add pigment to it and it is a fun glaze. They call it the secret sauce. And I'm pouring that a little bit out into a cup. That way I do not contaminate my container full. Um, and because, because the DIY products are all natural, they don't have any preservatives in them. If you dip a dirty brush into your stuff, it's gonna get gross and funky and stinky to be honest it still works but it stinks all right so just a thin layer across my surface and I'm just gonna line him up now there's a million different ways to decoupage I like a good vintage look so I do it just like this if there's a little bit of wrinkling I don't mind if you don't like that wrinkly look, I know you can do like iron on methods and stuff. I still have yet to try them. <laughs> oh, Cindy says she loves my shirt. Thank you. You know what? This is one of uh, Jamie's new shirts, Jamie Ray Vintage. I ordered myself two as a little treat. This one and the other one says Vintage Soul with flowers on it. And technically, I think I still have five more years before I'm really considered vintage. Because I think vintage is 40 and up. And I'm only 35, but whatever. Some days I feel vintage. Um, where can you find the paper I'm using? I am going to drop the link for you again. This is over on my website. In my JRV decoupage paper collection and I've only got one of these Santas left. I'm going to restock them um, and they usually ship pretty fast so I will have some in stock I'd say probably in about a week maybe a little less. I know lots of my friends probably have some in stock too so if you need them faster than that you can check them out at any of the other JRV retailers. Okay, so now I'm just doing a thin layer of this patina on top as well. Brandy said she loves the Vintage Souls shirt, um, the other one that I got. It looks like a vintage tattoo, it does. It's very pretty. I'll be rocking it soon, don't you worry. 
All right, so you see my decoupage job here is not super fancy. There's some bubbling, there's a little wrinkling. It's okay, it's gonna look super cool. I am going to take my little um, disinfectant cloth here and just clean up the extra patina off of the rest of this wood because I wanna keep that wood natural. Okay, I'm gonna use my heat gun and dry this. Do that very cautiously. Paper and heat obviously don't always mix well. You don't wanna burn your paper. Um, and I don't usually do this, but it makes it go a little faster. If I wasn't live, I would just let this dry by itself. What are y'all up to today, this week? I have a very busy week ahead of me. I'm leaving in one week next Monday to go to the Empowering Creativity Retreat um, hosted by Dion Woods. And that's in Branson, Missouri, which is about four hours away from me. And you guys, there is literally a bug sitting on top of my camera right now. <laughs> okay, now he's behind my camera somewhere on my tripod. He was a little green bug. <laughs> oh my goodness. Eva just grabbed some paper. Awesome, Eva. What do you plan to do with it? Do you have plans yet? Or you just grabbed it because it's that good and you will make plans after it arrives. I've got lots of plans. I'm going to be using the um, decoupage paper on my edited video this week as well. Okay, so that's mostly dry. needs just a little bit more. Brandy says she's trying to decide if she has the guts to do her first craft fair. It's two, it's in two weeks, only four minutes from her house and on her birthday. She thinks the universe is telling her something. Brandy, that sounds about right. Um, couple of questions. Do you know like how big your space would be? Do you have a table size? Two weeks isn't super long to make a lot of stuff. So I would say um, pick some items that you could kind of assembly line out if you don't have stuff ready already. Um, is it gonna cost you a lot of money? You wanna make sure you make your money back. Oh, awesome. Eva said she grabbed some silver trays that she's gonna use this on. That'll be pretty. Oh guys, the bug is back. <laughs> Okay, so after this dried, I had a couple of just loose edges here. I'm just going to take a little extra patina, and I'm kind of pushing it underneath, pushing it on top, and pressing that back down. This decoupage paper is 18 pounds, so it is thin. But it's not so thin that like when I go over this a second time here, it starts ripping and tearing like maybe a tissue or um, napkin would. And then it's thin enough though that it doesn't like, it's not super hard to apply. I've also tried to decoupage like poster thickness paper and stuff and it's hard. I'm not, uh, I'm not the best crafter. It's my little secret. Brandy said she sews, which I knew. You've made bulk, um, the bowl cozies, quilted baskets, and casserole carriers. You have plans for a bunch of stuff with your Cricut and some upcycle projects as well. Go for it, Brandy. It sounds like you've got it figured out, girlfriend. If you have um, more questions, like as you go and, and as you're planning and you want to chat about it, you can email me too, and we can chat back and forth. Upcycledbybree at gmail.com. If you have any questions about pricing or setup or anything, I'd be happy to help. It's a 10 by 10 for $50 and you have a bunch of stuff ready. Girl, go for it. You got this. Steph sells stuff by the seashore. Good morning. <laughs> that one is so tricky to say. Okay, now the bug is on the side of my phone. 
Oh my goodness. He might crawl around to the camera. We'll see. Probably came in because it's getting so pulled out. Okay. Now this is dry. Let it cool down for just a second. So it looks like I just took a piece of paper and stuck it on the sled, right? Brandy said the bugs are ridiculous there too. The flies have been crazy this year. I'd rather have flies than mosquitoes though. Oh, and it's um, the year for stink bugs. You guys have stink bugs where you're at? I'm going to see if I can get this little guy. Hold on. <laughs> there he is. Just a, just a little guy. <laughs> Can y'all see him? Hold on. Okay. Now he's gone. <laughs> He is a cute little bug. I put him outside. <laughs> hey, Stephanie from California. Okay, so now I've got some 220 grit sandpaper here. And I am going to start sanding down around my edges. Now, you want to make sure that your, your grit isn't any higher than that. Or you can, you can put scratches through your design. But as I start to sand that down, see how I'm losing a little bit of the color and it's starting to blend in a little bit more. Now, oh, you know what I did? I did not leave the red on the top and I left the red on the bottom. I don't love that for me. I might uh, end up snipping off a little red on that trim and putting it up there later. That might throw off my my OCD a little bit. That's okay though. <laughs> Late Night Creation says the bugs are always real in Texas. They're probably huge too, right? But now I'm just going to go around all of my edges and just soften them up with my sandpaper. If I took it and wrapped the decoupage paper like all the way around, if this piece would have been big enough, you can also use the sandpaper like this on, right on the edge and cut the paper. But the reason I picked these up, uh, these uh, sleds were, gosh, I think oh, about five dollars, about five, four, four dollars, I think is what I paid for them, which is a little higher than I normally would. But the fact that they turned around into the shelf, I was like, that's yeah, just you can use it all year round. It's just cute. Oh, and then it's got. You know what I just did. Happy Monday. Okay, well, the one that's already sold <laughs> will not be this one. You guys, why didn't you tell me? <sighs> that makes me want to cuss. <laughs> oh, this is why I don't go live on Monday mornings. <laughs> Deborah says she loves that Santa. I do too. Now he's upside down. Gosh darn it. Steph says she's like, what happened? Okay, sorry. Steph wasn't on live. So the holes to hang the sled are up here. But you know what I could do? Wait. I am a creator. I can put holes right here. Boom. Never mind. Just kidding. I was testing you guys. Yeah, Brandy said drill holes at the bottom. Okay, thank you, girl. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't get mad and just start. <laughs> just kidding. Let's resume our sanding. Oh, okay. You know what we need to do? 
this is gonna fix it. Oh, this is why y'all love me, right? <laughs> I'm gonna grab 120. I know I said don't go a lot higher, but I'm gonna be careful. I wanna get these edges down just a little bit more. <clears throat> yes, exactly, Brandy. Well, that's what I was about to say. I was about to say, oh, look, there's holes at the bottom, too, so you can, like, hang something. And then I realized that was technically the top before, but now it's the bottom again. So it'll hang, and you could do something at the bottom. <sighs> Steph says that seemed like a moment right out of her life. You know what, Stephanie, I have, um, or whoever just said the dowels, I have dowels, too out in the garage. I bet I've got one that'll fit. <laughs> okay, we're good. I thought I just lost 18 minutes of, of crafting with y'all for no reason. <laughs> That's funny. Anywho. I also took a bunch of Christmas. This is 120. This is, yeah, this is going to take my edges down just a little bit more. Puts just a little tiny baby hole in there. That's what I'm going for. So I also took Christmas up to my booth. If y'all are local here in Topeka, I've got a booth at the Owl's Nest at the 2901 Southeast Adams. And last week I went in and stocked it. I've got some beautiful displays, lots of red and green, like traditional colors so far. Yeah, Robin says she knows I did that on purpose to teach us how to turn an oops into an ah. <laughs> Oh, man. The funny thing is, like, so when I'm not live and I'm, you know, just working or whatever, I don't, I, well, first of all, I don't make as many silly little mistakes, but my creative brain is working a little better because I'm not reading comments and crafting and dropping links. So when I'm live, y'all get the, y'all get the real bloopers. Yeah, I'll stick a doll in this. I, I won't be able to do that live. I've got to clear out in my garage. I'll have to cut one down. But I will always uh, drop the finished products in the um, community tab. I'll drop a picture for y'all. Okay, so now look here. We've got these edges. They're starting to look worn down and tattered. Like this has been on there for a while instead of just like I just uh, decoupaged it on. Let me hit the other side here. Like I said, I might go through and put a little red stripe across the top. I might not. I think it makes it look a little more finished with that piece up there. And that's the great thing about decoupage papers. You can layer them and stack them. You can mix your decoupage papers together. Um, I love the look of the decoupage papers and stencils mixed together. I see some signs in my future. I have so many ideas and so much great junk right now. I'm gonna spend the whole day just filming and creating. It's gonna be a good Monday. I, probably filming some bloopers too from the, from the way things are going. <laughs> So if you guys are makers and creators, let me know. Are you making Christmas yet? Do you have it up on your sites? Do you have it in your booths? Are we thinking about uh, making gifts yet? I'm gonna pull a nice little hunk of uh, paper off up here. Deborah started Christmas in June. You go, girl. Man, you are ahead of the game. What about the beaded trim stamp or a mold across the top? So, Brandy, I don't carry IOD products. 
because there is another retailer already that has my my area, my territory. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have a lot of that stuff. I've got a few that people have sent me and gifted me. Maybe I'll see if any of my friends want to send me some molds and I can use them on a video or two for you. Eva already has Christmas up in her booth. Late Night Creations is working on Christmas, putting it in her booth on Wednesday. Nice, ladies. I'm proud of you. I walked my antique mall and there's honestly not a ton of Christmas out yet or at my thrift stores. I need y'all to get on it. Local, local thrift stores. Um, I, I started to say earlier I went thrifting yesterday um, at a place I don't usually go to. It's called Charlie's Thrift Venture here in town and it is a cool place and I got some good junk. I'll show you guys a couple things before we're off. Okay, so now I pulled a little honk a chunk, made it look like it's been on here for a while. I thought about sanding down through the creases here and breaking the, the paper, but that would go right through Santa's gut. So I don't think I'm going to do that. But now that I've sanded, see how I've kind of scuffed up my wood. I've got some dings and, and whatnot over here. I don't hate that because the wood is older and y'all know I like a good distressed look, but I am going to take a little bit of my Sweet Pickens hemp oil and just freshen this up. Just a little bit. So I'm gonna work with a sponge brush again. Put a little bit here into a cup. Oh, Deborah says when you're a teacher, the summertime is about the only free time you have. So that's when she creates her Christmas. That's very smart. Very, very smart. Hold on, let's. Sorry guys. Okay, so sponge brush, a little bit of hemp oil, and this hemp oil is a food safe product. So if you guys are making um, cutting boards and stuff this year, this is a great way to seal it. Um, do know though, if you're making your cutting boards and stuff, make sure you are being cautious about what kind of wood you're using because not all wood you're buying at the store, if it's treated and stuff, it's not food safe. So keep that in mind, but this hemp oil is a food safe product. So put on a little bit here, makes it nice and shiny. Let me grab paper towels. I like these Viva paper towels, they're super cloth-like. And again, I don't always use paper towels, I try to use rags, but on something like this, it really works a lot better. Woo! Look how pretty. So before, that's what my wood was looking like. A little bit of hemp oil really freshens it up. And then right here where I've got it kind of scratched up from sanding, we'll just put a little over. And that helps take away those scuff marks. So the hemp oil will also seal your milk paint up. It will refresh your raw wood, the inside of drawers. It's food safe for your kitchen flips. It's got really no smell to it. Um, the Sweet Pickens beeswax products smell really good, but this hemp oil just smells clean or not even really like anything. <laughs> What's my favorite hemp oil? This one. <laughs> this is the Sweet Pickens. This is the only one I've ever tried. Uh, oh no, that's a lie. I ordered some off of Amazon right when I first started this whole gig before I carried the Sweet Pickens product. Um, and it was okay. I, I mean, it worked, but I love this. This hemp oil is all I use. Everybody asks me what my favorite paints are and I'm just like, I'm so stuck on Sweet Pickens and DIY. I don't really venture out much. that really just refreshes the wood. Um, and then I was gonna put the new rope in there and show you guys, but now that's going to be where the dowel goes. I'll drill a couple of holes so you can hang it. 
Um, like I said, one of these is already sold, but there's still one available. The other one won't look exactly like this because I'm not going to cut up my last piece of paper, but it'll be good. I will put the final pictures of these two up in community tomorrow for sure. And I've got one more thing I'm going to do with y'all today. I've got these cute little baskets that I thrifted and I wanted to do just a little stenciling on them. So I can grab these and put them up on my site and put them in my booth as is. And they don't really sell very well, but if I paint them and I stencil and stamp and stuff, they go a lot quicker. Hey, Teresa. Um, Brendan asks, uh, how do we learn which woods are safe for kitchen flips? So Brendan, you just wanna make sure you're getting raw wood. Um, you don't wanna buy anything that's been treated already with chemicals. Or so if you're, if you're grabbing curbside wood or whatever, just be very cautious, like fence boards and stuff. Those are not going to be safe to use for charcuterie boards. So just make sure you're getting raw, raw wood. I love a good piece of cedar, a good piece of pine, um, maple and walnut. Um, but if you're going to be doing kitchen flips, make sure you know where your wood's coming from is all. Okay. Let me make sure I did not miss any questions or anything. Okay, looks like we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the link for the stencils and now that we're gonna do a little stenciling. Okay, there's the JRV stencils, and I've got a couple different ones pulled here that I love for Christmas. So this one is new this year to my site. This is the sleigh rides. I've only got one of these available. I'm going to get some more with that Santa paper. These went fast too. I've got the sleigh rides. This one I had up last year, and I've used it. Um, I used it on that enamel tray that... I turned into a sign and then today I'm going to open up one of my holiday greens. I like the little um, words down here. Yeah, Carol said I could put a dowel in the bottom hole and someone could use it for a stocking hanger. That's a great idea. Stocking hanger, a tea towel, something like that. Um, or just like a little piece of, of greenery swag could hang off the bottom. Something, something like this. That'd be so cute. Teresa was outside sanding. Teresa, it is 34 degrees. Eh, it's probably closer to 40 now. It's cold in Kansas today. I'm jealous. I was outside in my garage with a sweater. Okay, so this is a JRV stencil. Look how thick that is. She makes these super thick um, to be used over and over again. So they're easy to clean, easy to wash, and they are great for beginners. Now, I'm just doing all the bold crafting today because this is not going to be easy to put on here at all. Um, but I think I'm just going to do like wreaths, swags, garlands up here around the top, the little tiny letters. Not try to put the whole thing on, but we're going to do our best. Teresa, make sure you go back and watch the, uh, the beginning of this video because I was very, very silly. Where'd my tape go? Uh. Hmm, I just had it. There it is. <laughs> it's like I literally just had it. Oh, goodness. Alrighty, so I don't always take these stencils down when I'm doing them, but this one calls for a little bit of tape. Just to help me hold it in place. And I'm going to use some marquee. This is a great bright red. Monday said, or Robin said it's Monday after all. Yes, it is. It's okay. If y'all are new, I love my DIY paint and products. It is a clay-based paint, very highly pigmented and thick, so it is great for the stenciling. 
covers really well. I'm gonna grab just a little bit out here. I don't need much. Pop it into my lid. And I've got an, a 3 8 inch stencil brush, also by JRV. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit right here on the end of my brush and I'm gonna actually offload most of this onto a paper towel. Just like so, that way I've barely got anything on my brush. That is the key to a nice crisp image. Got a little bit of tape that's not really doing anything. <laughs> so it looks like we're freehand in here. Now, sometimes I swirl, sometimes I do more of a stippling motion. Swirling's not gonna work on this surface. I'm just going to work around <clears throat> and hold it down letter by letter. Okay, I gotta sit. One second. Let me work around this little metal piece and then I can stand back up. While I'm doing this part, y'all let me know if you have tried the JRB stencils before. I lied, I'm not gonna be able to stand back up. <laughs> Hold please. And I'm still working with that original drop of paint. So if you're new to stenciling, I would suggest to try a flat surface first. And then as you get braver, you can start working around. It's a little wonky, but I love it. This guy will be $14.95, or it already is up on my site, uh, but I'm going to fill it with some of those greenery swags. You have the pack of stencils. Which ones did you get, Teresa? Was it the grain sock minis? I can't remember. You've ordered a couple things. Sweet, Robin has this one and a larger one. Maybe the brushes, I think, is what she means. Okay, this is gonna fit perfectly on here. Now that I've worked around that metal piece, I think I can stand back up. I love these little baskets though. I can thrift them for just a couple of bucks. Do a real quick flip on them, fill them up with some greenery. And they are so cute. I love them for fall and for winter especially. I've even used them in the summer with lemons. Oh, okay, yeah, Teresa got uh, words. It's the, uh, I think you got the Main Street word pack. That's a good one. I remember now. So this right here is proof that if you are struggling or you're not super great with your stenciling, stencils are very forgiving. Bam. And honestly, I'm doing like it's not even, I'm getting like almost not even full coverage because I'm being so careful <clears throat> and it's making it look more like a stamp than a stencil. I'm digging this. Struggle bus, but it's turning out cute. Story of my life. Um, what do you guys, I asked last, last thrift haul <clears throat> what you guys wanted me to look for. Is there anything y'all are wanting to see me create? I have big plans to do a DIY fireplace mantle. Um, I have, I, I don't have quite enough of the right wood. So that's in the works. That's been requested a couple years now in a row around Christmas time. 
And I want to get that up in November for sure, like early November. Any other requests on um, things you guys want to see me make, want to see me shop for? Any products? Uh, now I can't, I can't like guarantee I can carry product lines, but I've, I've been thinking and looking a lot at Prima transfers lately because I, I, I can't sell IOD. Somebody has my territory already, but I love transfers. Deborah's been looking for deer figurines. Okay, I can definitely keep an eye out. I always buy deer when I grab or when I find them. Look how cute that is. And then I'll leave the other side plain, so they can they can take it and they can use it for different seasons too. Now I might. Oh, I thought I had my I thought I had my rolling chair. <laughs> I might have end up adding a little something else. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I'm going to um huh, Teresa said she prefers the Prima transfers. No shame in your game, girlfriend. I've used Prima and I've used IOD and I love them both. Good morning, Lorraine. <laughs> so, yeah, I... Ooh, paint the handle red. That's a good idea, Paula. Then I couldn't use it all year round so much. But that's okay. We'll live on the wild side. I like it. But yeah, I've used both IOD and Prima transfers. I left them both equally. And I have access to the Prima stuff through Sweet Pickens, since I'm a Sweet Pickens retailer. So it's a big investment. But I'm thinking that's going to be my next product I add in. This was a good call, Paula. I'm going to paint this little handle red and then we'll seal up the stenciling and the handle with a little bit of clear wax. Oh, and then don't let me forget, I'll show you a couple of my favorite finds from yesterday. I don't even need to do much more thrifting this week. I got some good stuff. Um, I probably will. I need to get some more Christmas stuff. I'm hoping that a couple of the stores will have some more stuff out. Okay, so I didn't even do quite full coverage on that because I want it to look a little distressed. Is anybody dressing up for Halloween? That's coming up here in a couple of weeks. Elena is going to be a shark. Her costume is already in. And I think I'm going to dress up this year, too, so that'll be fun. Um, but let me know. Are you guys dressing up, or what are your kiddos going to be? I always like to see all the different costumes. Since we're doing Christmas stuff in October, we can talk about Halloween a little bit. All right, I've got my 220 grit sandpaper here, and I'm just going just gonna to distress just a little... Now, this is making my red go like schmear just a little bit, but if I just take a dry rag and wipe it, it'll come off. So we're a little schmeary. Liz says, oh my gosh, I finally caught your live. Love all of your spunk and your ideas. Just a beginner, but definitely sticking around. Big, te uh, big Texas, thank you. Thank you, Liz. Welcome. Hey, Liz, if you like my spunk, <laughs> And my ideas, be sure to fast or uh, rewind to the beginning of this. When we're done, it was it was quite the entertainment for the first half hour. <laughs> it's a Monday morning. Okay, so we're a little smeared. Just gonna take a paper towel and do one of these little numbers, and that'll come off. So no worries. Welcome, Liz. I'm glad you caught me live. And we are all a beginner at some point, for sure. I'm going on. I think we're working into year number, uh, year number three here. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. A couple years of coming up on YouTube. It's 
pulling a little bit of that red back off. And now I have got my clear wax, my all time favorite wax for sure. If you haven't used the DIY wax before, watch this. It's like butter. It is so easy to use. It is definitely my favorite sealer. Just take a little bit here on a chip brush, right over the top of that paint, and it's sealed. No drippy, messy, runny top coat. If y'all like a top coat, there's, there's no shame in that. <laughs> I never have good luck with it. Although sometimes, sometimes it's necessary when I'm using furniture and stuff. I prefer to spray a top coat. You won't catch me brushing a top coat very often. So I'm just gonna go real quick over my letters just to seal those up too. Voila! So cute. So what did that take me? I don't know, 10 minutes on a live. I probably could have done it a little quicker if I wasn't live. And it takes that up so much. Now, I have a bag of a leftover greenery here. And I don't have any floral foam inside, but I'm just going to give y'all an idea. I don't even know what all I've got in here. Give y'all an idea. And what I will do is just take a piece of floral foam and hot glue it down in the bottom. That way it's not super permanent glued in there and it can be taken off. I might not even have to hot glue it. That way it can be taken off and this basket can be turned around and used like 4th of July for the red or, you know, some people decorate with red all year round. So I always save my scraps. Oh, this is cute. I've got some cute little red eucalyptus left in here too. Always save all of my little random scraps like this. You can take these and just like attach them to the side, one tiny little sprig like that, um, or up on the side of a frame. I really want more of this is what I'm digging for here. I don't think I'm gonna have quite enough of it, but y'all will get the point. How long should one al allow that particular wax to cure? Okay, so with the DIY wax, that's a great question. Um, like this is gonna feel dry to the touch after an hour, so I didn't use very much. It'll be dry, ready to take into like my booth tomorrow, cool? Say you're waxing a huge piece of furniture um, and you're wanting to move it to a client's home or you wanna move it in a different space in your house or up to your booth or whatever. Technically that wax is going to take like a good 30 days to really cure hard. Now, I take my furniture pieces up to my booth a couple of days after I wax them. I'm just super, super careful. I try not to place anything around them that would scratch them up. I don't put anything on the top that's gonna scratch them if I waxed it. Um, but you know, do that at your own risk. Just know that it really takes a good 30 days for it to really cure rock solid. Once it's on there, and it's sat for a while, it's not going anywhere. Okay, so this isn't the exact greenery I'm gonna use, but y'all get the point. I will just take some little Christmas flags, I'll put it in some floral foam, and it will be adorable. These would be really cute. <laughs> Walking everywhere. This would be really cute with some little birch logs too. Okay, that's about all I got for y'all this morning. Thank you for enjoying the, the Monday morning shit show. <laughs> oh, if you are just kind of hopping on, be sure you catch the beginning if you want to see uh, me be crazy and have some laughs. <laughs> um, but everything I showed today, let me drop it real quick before I hop off. Make sure there's no more questions. I'm going to drop the thrift haul. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you a couple things. See, I already forgot. <laughs> Let me drop this thrift haul. This is where you'll find the baskets and the sleds that I did. We'll drop the decoupage paper and the stencils one more time too for easy shopping. If you're catching the replay, you can click that little live chat button and see what I'm talking about. And let's do the decoupage paper too. Hmm. 
<laughs> I'm glad y'all love me. I appreciate it. This is why this is why people are scared to do lives. I just roll with it. Okay. Couple of my favorite things from yesterday's haul. First of all, first time ever, 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 ever that I have found an enamel pitcher. This one is definitely blue and white, although it almost looks black. Like you could definitely, if you set that next to black and white enamel, you might be able to tell, but it almost looks black. Never, never have I found a pitcher. I found a million enamel bowls. First ever pitcher. That was $7.99, so I paid up for it just a little bit. Definitely worth it. And these things are not up yet. They will be up this weekend. Also, if y'all have watched me for a little while, you know I just started parting with some of my teal decor, right? And I've moved into more of this kind of like sagey, olivey green color. And I just sold one of my favorite things ever. It was a big, beautiful, teal, rusty ice cream bucket. Uh, Tony, you did catch a live, but you're catching the very end of it. So you'll have to catch the replay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I, I parted with that teal, rusty bucket. It actually went down to my friend Renee, Foyo Eyes Only, down in Florida. And I was thinking, okay, I'll find another one someday that fits my style. Here it is. And this was the absolute last thing I picked up. Last thing I found, $6.99. $6.99. Ah! Um, KitchenAid, made in the USA, Troy, Ohio. Green, sage, rust. I'm in love. So I'm probably gonna keep that bad boy for a while. Okay, and then a couple more things. I wanna show you everything. I really, really do. But then, there would be no point of having a thrift haul. Okay, three more things, and then I'm gonna go. <laughs> I picked this up, he charged me $4.99 for it. Y'all already know I am going to give it the chop, and we're gonna salvage these little tiny parts. I'll probably turn them into Christmas ornaments. I might sell a few as is, and then these cute little wood pieces as well. Great piece of salvage there. I usually find salvage for free, but that one was definitely worth the five. Look at this finger joint cigar box. It needs a little bit of love. Gorgeous, full of old pictures. That was $5 too. <laughs> no, look at this guy. I'm keeping him. Lorraine found that one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I gotta have it. $1.99. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all, that was fun. I'm gonna go. Um, thanks for hopping on, and I will have an edited video up hopefully tomorrow evening, if not for sure on Thursday. Have a great Monday. Bye, friends.